Greetings, it's Maxo Diddley, and today I am going to be showing you how you can convert a string representation of a number into an integer. So firstly, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be creating a dictionary. Don't worry, this dictionary is going to be in the description below, but it's going to support numbers up to 99. If you want to go beyond that, you'll have to expand it yourself. A dictionary structure in C Sharp is like a real life dictionary. Instead of looking up words definitions, you look up values associated with specific keys. So basically, the string representation of a number are the keys, and the numbers on the right hand side are the values. If we search up for the word for, that's going to be the key, and the value we're going to get from that is going to be the integer for which is going to be the value. And it's private static read only, which means, private means only code inside this class can use it. Static means it belongs to the class, not the instance. And read only means it can't be changed after it's set. We don't want to change the values of our dictionary in this tutorial, so we're going to keep it that way. This is the name of the dictionary. And when you create it, these are the values of our variable types. We have string and then int, because we have a string for the word, then a integer version of the word. But let's get into the actual code. So firstly, we're going to do public static int question mark convert words to number string word. So we're going to return an integer based on the string word we inputted. And the question mark indicates that the integer that we return is nullable. And by default in C-sharp, integers can't be null. They always have to have a value. For instance, the default value of an integer is zero. However, sometimes in programming, you might want to express the absence of a value or the concept of no value, which is where null comes into play. So when we add a question mark to a value type like int, we're basically saying, we can return a null if we want to. And we might actually want to return a null in this context because zero is an actual number. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do if string dot is null or white space word return null. So basically, if the string is empty, it stops and gives back null. Because if it's empty, then it can't be in the dictionary. Also, I just want to say one thing, make sure you have system and system.collections.generic imported at the top of your code like this. After that, we're then going to do word equals words.toLower.trim. This makes sure the word is completely lowercase and removes any spaces at the beginning or the end. And then we do if word number mapping, which is the name of our dictionary, dot try get value word out int value return value. So this bit of code is trying to find the words directly in the dictionary. So let's say we type in the number five. It's going to try and look for the number five, which is great. And if it finds it, we return whatever we found. And for the try get value, so the first parameter is the key, what we're going to be looking up the definition of, and then out int value is going to be, if we, if we find a value that matches the definition, we're going to store it in a integer called value. And then after we're going to return the value, which is this integer. However, if we don't find a direct match, we're not going to panic because there's another little thing we're going to be doing with this dictionary. So you might've noticed I missed out on a lot of numbers. After 20, I then just do the tens up until 90. And you might be thinking, but why? Well, basically if we exclude the teens, twenties to 90, it's just 20 followed by a number that already exists. Like we have 21 or 69. Notice how that number is just made up of two elements of our dictionary. So instead of having to write out every single number to 99, we can have far less and then we can split up the number word into different sections and then check those sections against the dictionary instead. So if we type in 21, we'll split it up. So we check for a 20 and we check for a one. Since both have an integer value, we'll get both of them, add it together and get the integer value of 21, even though we don't have 21 in the dictionary. So you're going to need to make sure you have some kind of delimiter so you can basically know how do we split up this word representation of a number? I'm going to have a minus symbol in between each section of the number word. 
You could make it a space, a comma, whatever you want, but it has to be consistent. And so basically we're going to be splitting up the word into multiple elements of a string array, and we're going to be using the minus symbol to chop up the word. If parts dot length double equals two. Int tens part, int ones part. So we're going to be making two integers. One's going to be for the ten section, one will be for the one section. If you want to expand this into the hundreds, thousands, this is where you're going to have to modify the code a bit. Like you might want to check for parts length to be equal to three and then have another int for the hundreds part. And then we're going to do if word.mapping.try value part zero out tens part and words number mapping dot try get value parts one out ones part return tens part plus ones part. This is literally doing what we did before, but we're splitting up the task of trying to find this number in our dictionary to, okay, we're going to look for the 10 section first, then check for the one section after. And then we're going to add up the result because it's an integer. Basically how I explained before. After the if statement, we do return null because if we didn't return a value here, that means we've searched the entire dictionary for numbers. What we entered wasn't found in there, so we're going to return a null. We are then going to have a little main method, so we're going to do string tests equals 3, 21, 85, 42, and 10, and then we're going to do for each var test in tests, console.writeLine test plus arrow plus convert word to number test and console.read key. So this console.read key stops the console from closing because we're in C Sharp in Visual Studio. This is going to be an array of test data and we're going to loop through all the test data and test out our convert word to number function where we pass in a string representation of a number as a word. Let's save our work and hit play. And as you can see, it successfully converted everything into the integer version of the number. So. Thanks for being a great audience, be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more C-Sharp tutorials. See you next time.